Hello Blossom, thank you very much for joining us here today. Um, it's very brave of you to come along and um, we want to tell the viewers watching the story of what happened to you in relation to cryptocurrency investment fraud. So I suppose the first question for you is what happened? Thank you, Andy. I feel honored to be here and I'm hoping that by sharing my experience, it will help some unsuspecting individual to think seriously if they're being drawn into the situation that I was drawn into. I hope it will raise awareness and also help people to understand that this could happen to anyone. It's not an just it's not just a case on its own. You know, there are people out there. And the more you know about it and you're aware and be more vigilant, the better it'll be for you. So in your case, tell us what yes. happened. How did it all start? Well, I um, saw an advertisement for investing money, the minimum being £250. I read everything there was to read about it, and to me, it was genuine. I knew nothing else. So I rang the number that was enclosed. Someone, a gentleman, spoke to me and said he would pass me on to another gentleman, which he did. So I was rung by this chap and things just progressed and got out of hand from there. I was just taken over. But being unsuspecting and being honest, I didn't really think anything about it. I thought they were just being helpful, as they said they were. They were. He, this happened on the 1st of June, 2023. It was quite a lengthy process for hours that day. It continued the next day, the second. That was a Thursday. On the Friday, it would have continued, but I was working. So I said to him, well, what about the Saturday? He said, you didn't work on the Saturday. But he would ring me on the following Monday. Now, on the first day, I, I must explain, I am not a whiz at IT. So, with him being helpful, he told me what to do. How to, um, I couldn't download anything, so he told me what to do, what buttons to press, and everything. Which I did. He was really helpful. At the end of that day, everything seemed okay. The next day, he said to me, well, you know, the more you invest, the more your returns will be. So I said, well, I didn't want to invest more than 250 pounds. So he went on and he went into my account, which of course he had access to. And he said, I'll just show you what I mean, because if you look at this, you'll see how much you can, how much return you can have by the end of a week. So I didn't have much money in the account that I'd 
said he could take the £250 out of. But having access to my bank details, he went into my other account. There wasn't much in it, but there was enough. So he extracted £3,000. And he was talking all the time and telling me he'll invest it with this bank, with Revolut, with Wise, with all the other people. And he was having difficulty at first to get it to go across. So he said, I know, I will mirror this. I will mirror this. I said, well, you can't be taking money out. He said, you'll get your money back. So he took another £3,000 out. And he kept doing that. And in the end, he took three lots of 3,000. It was four actually, and I got one 3,000 back. And he took amounts of 1,500, 100, all in that space of time. Okay, so during the course of these phone calls that you were getting from these advisors yeah. that you didn't know that were professional criminals, obviously. Yeah. They must have sent you a link for you to click on. And without your knowledge, they then downloaded a piece of remote software that gave them access to your accounts. And it appears that using your information, they opened other bank accounts in your name. What was the total financial loss as a result of these phone calls? Well, there were three, lots of 3,000. There was a 1,000, there was a 500, and there were lots of small amounts. Now, to be honest, because I hadn't intended any money coming out of that account, I wasn't altogether aware of just how much there was in it before we started. So, so at what point did you realise something's not quite right? Yeah. And what happened after that when you realised something was wrong? Yes, yes. He should have um, got back to me on the Monday. Well, Wednesday and Thursday passed and I couldn't sleep that night, Thursday night. I thought something's not right here. And when I woke up Friday morning, I thought I'll have to ring the police. And that is what I did. And I was advised to ring the National Fraud people, which I did. And the gentleman took all the details and advised me not to um, communicate with these people anymore. I rang the, I rang you, I, I can use your name, can't I? Of course. Yeah, Andy. I rang your department and I spoke to an officer or two and they gave me advice. And on the following Monday, I was getting phone calls all day from the fraudulent people. I stopped answering them after a while because, you know, there were eight, ten phone calls. And then I was getting, why aren't you answering me, you know? 
uh, and everything like that. In between this, you informed your bank? I did. I did. I beg your pardon. I did the same day, the Friday, same day as I contacted the police. I informed my bank. And what support? I, I, I'm assuming that you've been with your bank quite a considerable amount of time. About 50 years. 50 years? Yeah. And, and what support did the bank provide you? They put me through to the fraud department. And again, they took all the details. I explained everything to them. And they advised me not to speak to the fraudsters. And they said that they would be in touch with me. It would take a while. It would take a few weeks, but they would keep in touch. Also, that I could go to my local bank branch for support. To be honest, I got more support from the local branch because I wasn't hearing anything from the fraud people, at, you know, in the central branch and every time they had to ring them to say what's happening because I can't hear anything. I eventually had an email from them. It was about, about five weeks and their response to me was We do not think this was fraud. How did that feel? They just dropped me, just like that. I just, it just sunk me. When you contacted South Yorkshire Police, Yes. what support did you get in relation to the fraud itself and the advice that was provided? Well, about two weeks in, you came on the scene, Andy. You rang me and you made an appointment to come and see me, which you did. And really, you were a lifeline. Because I felt as though there was somebody, somebody who understood, somebody who was willing to support me. Somebody I could turn to, I could telephone you, email you. You gave me the support I needed because I hadn't got that support anywhere else. You advised me how to deal with the situation I was in. Security-wise, phone calls, phone messages. You told me about changing my phone and getting one that gave me some security. You advised me about uh, um, security in my property. You advised me about scams. I mean, they're out there, but you know, you, you, I just heard about them, but the way you presented the actual the actual thing happening, it was real. So, from that visit mm -hmm. and future conversations, um, what action did you take against the bank with the advice that he was given? Did you contact them? I spoke to you. And you said that I needed to send them a letter of complaint. And you helped me to compile this letter, which I sent. And I didn't hear anything for a while. 
not as soon as I thought they might have. And I rang, I rang them and apparently they had passed it on to the complaints department, which I learned was a different section of the frauds department of the bank. And I spoke to a lady who was very helpful and she also took my details just to hear my side of things. And she said she would do everything she could to help and to see what she could do and she would be in touch. Now that took some time At the end of six months, I got a phone call from them. And they said, this was another lady, this lady um, was the manager. And she said, she apologized. She said, we are very sorry that it's taken so long. We've been trying to get feedback from Revolut and they've not been very forthcoming. She said, we have realized that this was a fraud, a very sophisticated fraud, where they really got you to invest your money, although they had done all the business side of it and they've opened all these accounts in your name. So it appears that you have opened these accounts. She said, I'm going to send you a letter, but hopefully we will be able to refund you the money you have lost. And six months later, she sent me a letter to that effect. Good news for once throughout the course of this. Yes, yes. My next question, Blossom, is how did this impact on your health and well-being? It was bad. It's still not good, but it was bad. I... I lost a fair amount of money. Now I know people do lose money and I have worked very hard all my life. I don't squander. I'd rather give than have money taken from me. The impact on my life was devastating because it was taking from me what I had managed to save over the years. I hadn't, and I still have no one to turn to to say, can you cover this bill, you know, or can I have some money for something else? I've always been independent. And knowing that that money had just disappeared did not make me feel very good. It made me very, I felt very frustrated, very stressed. very sad and it was something I couldn't do anything about. I couldn't turn the switch off. The phone calls kept coming and each time you automatically look at your phone, do I recognize that number? At first, I didn't know who were phoning me 
so I would answer the phone. And it was always a fraudster. And it was usually the people I'd spoken to in the first instance. They never left me alone. They kept changing their numbers when I blocked the previous numbers. So it was very difficult for me to know who exactly was phoning me. This went on day after day I could have 10 phone calls in a day. The calls are still coming, not quite as frequently, but they're still coming and from all over the world. It just brings it all back. And I'm hoping that this interview will just help other people to realize that things are not always as they seem. If you're wanting to make an investment, small though it may be, get some solid advice first and think about it. I thought what I saw was genuine and it turned out not to be. Thank you, Blossom. Thank you very much. Thank you. Can I just say Yeah, of course, you can. of course you can. I feel that I should say to them that this sort of thing has happened to a lot of people. I've learned more since the incident. And I'd like to say that it's not something that you gladly discuss with family or friends because you feel such an idiot. I still haven't. So, Andy, you have been my rock as far as that's concerned. Thank you. Thank you.